Okay, welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Jared Borup. So Jared, welcome back. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, I'm a two-time interviewee of the 5 Minutes <laughs> segments here, so that, that's, a, that's a huge honor. Um, but I'm at uh, George Mason University. I'm at a master's program called the um, Learning Technologies in Schools program. And specifically in that, I, I work with teachers preparing them for blended and online learning. Um, I also co-edit the Journal of Online Learning Research with Leanne Archambault. Um, and uh, I guess one thing that's relevant this time is I have two daughters at home. And so right now I've been juggling, you know, working with them and work and everything else. Very good, very good. So obviously as a second time person you know that this time we're focusing upon school leaders and as you think about how this school year is sort of ending and and the disruption that's happened with that for school leaders what sort of advice would you give them as they start thinking about how to plan out starting up the next school year to accommodate some of the things that have happened during this this springtime yeah, it's great because we, we still have, you know, um, here locally we have about six weeks left, you know, so there, there's a pretty big runway just finishing up the year. Um, and one thing that I found with uh, just a couple different school districts, one school district was very uh, prescriptive on what teachers could or could not do. And they said, you have to use this tool, you have to do this at this time of day and everything. Um, and one thing that I found is that it was kind of a disaster. Uh, things fell apart. Everyone went online at the same time using the same tool, which then crashed. And it later came out that it hadn't been updated for, you know, three or four years. Um, so, so there's been um, some challenges with that when you try to dictate what every teacher should be doing. Um, on the other side, I saw one school district that was very open and, and the administrator basically said, be creative. They certainly set guidelines, like you have to meet these certain criteria. But in the end, um, he basically said, this is a, a unique situation. We need unique solutions. We need to be innovative. And what was amazing by that is they really found, um, they, they really found some ways to meet student needs that I wouldn't have thought of. And, and one thing that they did was uh, each, each parent or each family got contacted every other week, uh, a personal contact, like a phone call or something like that, um, which, which seems really powerful. And so it feels like right now it's kind of this incubator stage where you can explore and you can find new things. Because unfortunately, I think we're going to have prolonged school closures in the fall as well. And so we can, we can work that out. And also in the summer, I'd say administrators really need to think through how to transition from in-person to online, because hopefully we'll have some in-person time. So how do you make that transition? Uh, what is best done in person versus versus online? And how can you uh, be equitable, but also innovative uh, during that time? Now, you mentioned, you know, future prolonged school closures. And I think given the fact that this sort of happened very quickly and on a worldwide scale, it was kind of acceptable that folks got caught a little flat-footed here and we had to, to rush into this remote learning. But pandemics being what they are, we know there's likely going to be local flare-ups that may cause a district and contiguous districts to close down. There's likely going to be a second wave, which could cause entire states, maybe the entire country again, to close down. What advice would you have for school leaders so that they can start to prepare for this so that it's more seamless than what it was this time around since we know that it's likely coming? That's it. It's interesting. I, um... When we talk about blended learning at, at the K-12 level, it's more about uh, personalized learning and student choice and things like that. It's not really a reduced seat time blend, but in higher education, that's mostly what we see is a reduced seat time. So I, I think that, that K-12 schools can actually learn a lot from higher education as far as uh, working in online time and, and giving students a sense of rhythm um, in a blended environment. Because I, I really think, and what I've been hearing, is that there will be prolonged times when 
um, nobody will be going into the building. But also, uh, we're exploring options like maybe half the half the class will come one day, and then half the class will go the other day, and then you'll have some social distance there, and you know, one way hallways and outdoor classrooms and things like that. So, I, I think what what administrators really need to think through is how do we use that face face time? Because if we're if we're not using it well, it's not worth it, right? So that's one thing is is it's a risk to have that time. So it better be worth it. And uh, how do we use the online time? And I and I think that um, everyone jumped to Zoom uh, or to to the synchronous sessions. And sometimes it was mandated, and sometimes that's just what they wanted to do. That's what they felt comfortable with. Everyone kind of had their experience, maybe talking with family and things like that. So it's kind of familiar to people. But oftentimes. You know that that meme, um, that meeting should have been an email. I kind of think uh, that that webinar could have been a video recording, you know, or something like that. So really thinking through what what do we need to do synchronously with our students, either online or in person, and what can be done um, asynchronously. And especially during this time, uh, flexibility is really important, especially if if you have limited access to technology or uh, bandwidth at home or you know, internet access. Um, synchronous really amplifies the inequities that we see. And if you do things asynchronously, then, then everyone can participate more, more equally uh, across all students. Uh, that's not to say that school districts don't need to figure that out. Uh, they certainly need to figure out um, how to get the technology in the students' hands. Uh, and, and it really is the technology is necessary, but it's not about the technology either. It's about, you know, meeting with students where they are and, and letting students do or letting teachers do what they do best and just care and love their students, um, even at a distance. And if that's a phone, phone call, that's great. And if it's a Zoom call, that's great. And if it's a recorded something, that's great. If it's an email, just give them some latitude of, of what they do. Very good. Thank you. So this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with has been Dr. Jared Borup. Thank you.